What's up everybody? It's me, your favorite face to see. I hope that's not true, because it should be hers. Anyway. Anyway, let's talk about ads. I really do not like ads. Like, I searched for creeper body pillow one time, Google, and you know that's not what I meant. Stop showing me ads for that, please. Hoo-hoo, I hope that joke lands. <laughs> So the big question is obviously how do we go about blocking ads? Well, you might say install an extension in your browser and not worry about them. But what if I want to block ads on my phone? What if I want to block ads on the Microsoft Solitaire app? And that's kind of where we're going with this. And in order to do that, we're going to install a network-wide ad blocker on a Raspberry Pi. But before we get there, I need to convey some terminology to you so you can follow along. And I am not a Asus admin, I am not a server administrator, so I'm going to do my best to present the information as best I can. But if I mess up or I get something wrong or something isn't complete, please let me know. For now, let's dive into an older format so I can share some knowledge. Right, so here is all the terminology that I think is needed, or at least that I hope is needed in this video. And it might look a bit overwhelming at first, but I did just want to put everything on a single page so that it was all easy to see and understand. Let's start with what we know. A URL is basically just a web address, something like google.com. An IP address is what devices use to refer to other devices on that network. So a computer is really bad at knowing what google.com is, but it can very easily figure out what 192.168.1.42 is. So that's why IP addresses are used. A DNS is really the crux of this video. What it does is it converts the URLs into something computers can understand. So it converts the URL into the IP address, and it's the DNS system that we're going to exploit for the Raspberry Pi ad blocker. A subnet and subnet mask aren't all too important here, but it's useful to know that they represent how an IP address is divided up, namely between the portion that represents the network and the portion that represents the unique identifier of the device on the network. A host name is as simple as it sounds, it's just what a device is called on a local network. So for the most part, these are auto-assigned by devices, but you can set them, and we'll be setting ours in this video. And I've just added there that, for context, a local network is generally the geographically constrained network that you're on. So in most cases, in our homes, the local network is just the router and all the devices connected to it. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, assigns each host or each device on a network with its IP address. A DHCP server usually runs on the router in home networks and detects whenever a new device joins and then assigns it an IP address. Lastly, ports are used when accessing particular applications or services on a given host. As we now know, unique hosts have unique IP addresses. But what happens if multiple applications are running on a single host? In that case, and even in cases when only one application is running, we use a port number to access a particular application. There are a host of specified and standardized port numbers, but we're not going to concern ourselves with that too much. You can look it up if you want. So I've just got a super simple command window here to show you through the use of a ping command the difference between a URL and an IP address. So all ping does is it acts as a ping, I guess. It reaches out to a server to see if it's there and tells us if there's any delay or kind of gives us a vague idea of what the network conditions are between our device where we're pinging from and the host. So we're going to ping google.com and you see it comes back with this IP address, 172.217.170.78, and that, that is the full IP address. So it's the DNS server that's responsible for converting google.com to this IP address over here. So at this point, you're probably wondering how the path fits into all of this. Well, remember how we said DNS is kind of like a phone book? 
Obviously, it's impractical for each and every DNS server to hold every single RP lookup. There are countless websites out there, and there are new ones every day. So the smart people who made DNS did, surprise surprise, a smart thing. And they said, hey, if a DNS server doesn't have a record for a URL, let's allow it to ask another DNS server. And this is pretty clever, because it means that DNS servers only need to store commonly accessed URLs. If a new website comes online, we only need to notify one DNS server. I'm obviously glancing over some detail here, but that's the gist of it. So when you usually make a web request, your router will go to a default DNS server, maybe the one hosted by your ISP or Google or Cloudflare, and that server will return the IP address of the server that we're looking for. But we can get ahead of all of this and instead tell our router that the Pi is the first DNS server to go to. The Pi hole has a block list of known ad addresses. So when a request is made to an ad server, instead of passing the request up the chain, the Pi just says, sorry, this doesn't exist. And then the ad doesn't load on your device. And that's it. Network wide ad blocking, just like that. It is important to note here though, that self-hosted ads, such as those seen on Reddit or Facebook, won't be blocked. And the reason for that is that the ads and those websites themselves sit on the same server. So we need those IP addresses to come through. So step one is obviously to set up your Raspberry Pi. And for that, I've made another video, which I will link to down in the description and add a little title card up in the top corner there. So make sure you go ahead and do that first and then come back. So we're just going to SSH in to our Pi, which we have at this address. Is that 144? No, not 244. And the password we set and we're presented with the Pi at Raspberry Pi. So this is this is all great. This is exactly what we need. We're actually going to start by installing Git. So we're going to apt install Git. We're adding a dash Y flag so that we don't need to answer any prompts. Next we're going to install Apache. PHP and the module for Apache that allows PHP to run. Apache is just an HTTP web server. This might take a while. Oh, why am I using Apache 2? There are other options like Nginx, but Apache 2 is just what I know. If you're comfortable or would prefer to use Nginx, go ahead, but I'm just going to be using Apache 2. Ask Reddit gets me sometimes. How can Olive Garden truly offer unlimited breadsticks if there is only a limited amount of matter in the universe? Top comment is exactly what I thought it would be. What do you think happens to the breadsticks after you eat them? It's still matter, right? Cool. Now that Apache is installed, we can actually check and see if we have a web server running on the Pi. And to do that, we can go to Google Chrome and go to the URL of our Raspberry Pi, and there we go, it works. We have Apache 2 running. Back in command prompt, we're now going to install PyHole. This is a bit more complicated, but nonetheless, just as easy. What we're doing here is we're grabbing the install script from PyHole and passing it into bash as a sudo user so it can all run. It's going to do all of its stuff, and when we get to the prompts, I'll guide us through. This installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker, and that's exactly what we want to do, so I'm keen. Enter for OK. It's free, but it is powered by your donations. So if you're able to donate, the Pi hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. We have done this by setting an IP in cmdline.txt, so we're happy that the static IP is set. Our upstream DNS provider, I'm happy with being Google. If you have a preference for one of these others, go for it. You can just hit enter. We want to install Stephen Black's unified host lists. This is just those block lists in order to block ads. You can hit OK. 192.168. Why is it dot one oh two? Right. Should be it's not 102, it's not 244. IPv4 gateway is just the router, and so that's 168.1.1. Yes. 
Do we want to install the web admin interface? We do. Do we want to install the web server? Here we don't. So we hit the down key and then spacebar to turn it off. And the reason for this is we're using Apache 2, so we don't need to use large TPD. Do we want to log queries? It's up to you. I personally prefer not to. Uh, the reason for that being storage space and having to clean logs, it can get a little tedious. It adds maintenance when maintenance isn't really required. So I turn that off. Privacy mode for FDL, we can leave at the default. Now it's installing everything. See, it's installing to var www html admin. That's all great. That's fine. That relates to the web server. And now this is done. So we can go to the web interface. It says at 192.168.1.244 slash admin. And we got to make note of that password. Enter. And we're done. Let's head back to Google Chrome. And we're at that web. So let me go slash admin. And there it is. Our Raspberry Pi high hole. We're not fully done yet though. We still need to set up the router and tell the router to use the Raspberry Pi as its first DNS server. So let's do that. So this next part is going to depend on your setup, particularly your router. Each router will be slightly different, but you should be able to find a guide online for whatever you need to do. And you're going to want to do two things. One, you're going to want to disable the DHCP server on your router because we're going to set up the PowerHole to be our DHCP server. And two, you want to set the router's DNS server to be the Raspberry Pi. So make sure you do those things. And then when that's done, come back. Next, we're going to modify a few settings in Pi. So we're going to log in, enter in the password we got in the command prompt. And we want to go down here to settings. We're going to go to DHCP and enable the DHCP server. And it even gives us a warning to make sure our router's DHCP server is disabled first. In terms of the range of IP addresses to hand out, I always like to give a bit of a buffer on either side. So we know that 192.168.1.1 is the router, which is our gateway. So that's set down here. And we'll reserve a couple of others just at the bottom in case there's any other specific devices I want to set static IP keys for. It's possible to do it through this web interface down here, but we'll just do that for the sake of it. And because we're at 244, I'll set it to one less than 244, which is 243. We can hit save. And that's pretty much DHCP set up. Now the Raspberry Pi will assign IP addresses. <laughs> Excuse me. Now the Raspberry Pi will assign IP addresses. And this is pretty good because it means when it comes to routing, the Raspberry Pi can just handle everything and we don't need to worry about setting lists and anything like that. It's just the simpler option. It also ensures that the ad blocking is across the entire network, which is absolutely what we want. So now that that's all done and you try and access a website, you may end up with something that looks like this. And the reason for that is that Windows is pretty strict about flashing DNS. So I've opened up a command window as an administrator. And the way to do that, as you'll see, is hit start menu, type CMD. And along the right hand side, you'll see an option for run as administrator. You can hit that and you'll see that your window ends up with C Windows System 32, which is special. And what we want to do is flush and renew the DNS. And that's three commands. So we're going to start rpconfig slash flush DNS, just like that. Then rpconfig slash renew. And then finally, we want to do rpconfig slash register DNS. And that's it. That'll fully reset the DNS on your system. But this is not just about disabling ads. This is about setting up the best budget server we can get. And we don't want to have to type in IP addresses every time. We want something with a bit more elegance. So we're going to create a custom entry for our Raspberry Pi. 
We've SSHed back onto the Pi, and we want to CD into etc. Apache 2 sites available. I'm using tab to autocomplete. If we do an ls here, we can see that these are the default configurations for Apache websites. We want to make a copy of the default site, and we're going to call it pihole.conf. Then we're going to edit that config file using nano, and I'm going to set the document root. Remember from our installation of pihole earlier, it's at var www.html admin. And we also want to set the server name to be pihole.raspberrypi. Close that with control X, hit Y to save, enter, and then we want to sudo a to n site pihole.conf, and then we want to do sudo system control reload Apache 2. Cool. And now we can go back to Chrome and take a look. So we're back in Chrome and we set up pihole.raspberrypi. If we go there, nothing happens. And this is not unsurprising because our Raspberry Pi on the Pi Hole is handling allocation of IP addresses. It can also figure out what these top level domains are and link them to IP addresses. So a custom DNS entry essentially. So back on the Pi Hole side of things, if we log in, and what we want to do is go to the Local DNS, DNS records, and for the domain, we're going to do pihole.raspberrypi, and the IP address is going to be 192.168.1.244. Going to add that. The domain must be valid. I think it mustn't have a slash. Success. The list will refresh. So now we've got pihole.raspberrypi, and it goes over here. We hit refresh here. There we go. We've got our Pi Hole at our custom domain, and that can be accessed on any device on your network because it's all handled through the Raspberry Pi. And that's it. Network wide ad blocking. No additional apps, no additional plugins sorted. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and I will do my best to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down and tell me why. We're not done with this project. So be sure to subscribe, because in an upcoming video, we're going to turn this little ad blocker into the best budget home server. See you guys then.